Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on Stargirl Season 2 with a little sprinkle of The Flash. So a good amount of what was going down in Stargirl Season 2 was kept a secret outside of a few things like villains and some new heroes, which were announced in the lead up to the Season 2 premiere. But one big thing that was announced that has had a lot of people excited since it was announced, and now that Season 2 of Stargirl has started, we're now counting the days and episodes, uh, or counting down the days and day uh, day. And now that season two of Stargirl has started, we are now counting down the days and episodes until it happens, and that is the guest appearance of John Wesley Shipp's Jay Garrick in episode nine. Now, all that was said at the time of this announcement is that John Wesley Shipp would be appearing in a pivotal flashback episode that establishes Garrick as a member of Earth 2's Justice Society of America. But in the weeks leading up to the season two premiere of Stargirl, this was said by Jeff Johns, the showrunner and creator of Stargirl. I grew up watching the Flash TV show. It was my favorite superhero when I was a kid and I was blown away by John Wesley Shipp when he played the Flash and then lucky enough to work with him on the Flash, so the 2014 show. To have John play Jay Garrick, the Flash and Stargirl connects our universe directly with the other shows and also shows that we're part of a grander universe. It opens up the door to opportunities for us to eventually interact with those characters. That was important, just like the comics. When we eventually do it, we'll do it in a hopefully very special Stargirl way. But of course, that quote plays into what happens sort of like beyond and or after this mini crossover that we, get, that we are getting in Stargirl later this season with Jay Garrick. But how will Jay Garrick's Flash directly play into the story for this season of Stargirl? As I mentioned towards the beginning of the video, they already said he would be appearing in a pivotal flashback episode that establishes Garrick as a member of Earth 2's JSA. But what are the events of those flashbacks? What's going on with the JSA that plays into the present day story with the new JSA? Outside of short scenes here or there, there hasn't been a massive focus on flashbacks or the past of this world and just this, yeah, this world and this setting and everything like that. But here, we're getting a complete episode pretty much with flashbacks, so something big must be going on, and I think I have a good theory as to what we will see. But of course, let me know in the comments section down below your various thoughts, excitement levels, theories as well, if I don't bring them up, or just your thoughts on what I say in this video. Very curious to hear the feedback and what you guys think of it. And of course, if you're going to enjoy the video, why not drop a like on it? Just let me know in the comments. I'm very curious to see what you guys think of this. So going into this season, we knew that Eclipso would be the overarching villain of the season with The Shade playing a part as well. But in episode one, right at the beginning, the opening scene for season two, we see a young girl named Rebecca lured in by a young boy called Bruce. This being Bruce Gordon, who is the first person that we see to be taken over by Eclipso, just like in the comics. And then we see Bruce or Eclipso supposedly kill Rebecca. Now, based off the end of episode two with Cindy Berman's interaction with her stepmother, Bobby, we can assume that what happened to Bobby happened to Rebecca. So just a pile of purpley black dust left behind, which is extremely, if not just definitely grim to think about considering it was a little girl that it happened to. However, Rebecca isn't just some random little girl. She is Rebecca McNider, the daughter of Charles McNider, AKA Chuck, AKA the original Dr. Midnight. Now, based off the events throughout episode three, we know that Eclipso's uh, notoriety, if you want to call it, stretches throughout the heroic and villainous sides of this world with the thought of Eclipso being out and about somewhere in the world, causing great concern for not only Pat Dugan, but also The Shade. And heading into episode four, it does seem that The Shade will be handing out hints and clues to the JSA, or at least leading them down the right path in regards to Eclipso and his history on Earth and what he has done and been a part of. And we do know that Pat will have to figure out a way in which to not only highlight the danger and explain the danger of Eclipso to the new, uh, to the new JSA, but also try and figure out a way in which to deal with him. You know, he doesn't have all of his other JSA buddies with him now. He's on his own with his new JSA. It's very similar to last season, but now this threat is even bigger. Now, this flashback episode with Jay Garrick could be the result of multiple episodes of build-up in regards to what Eclipso did during his last time and uh, period of destruction on Earth, which we probably got a taste of in that opening scene of season two with him killing Rebecca McNider. But I guess the big question is what happened previously before that moment and what happened directly afterward as well? Because surely... Eclipso going after a child of a JSA member wasn't just a coincidence. He just didn't kill some random little girl. It's like, oh, you know, oh, that was a, that was a member, that was a JSA family member. Oh, well, yeah, that was an accident. That wasn't intentional. You would have to think she was an intentional target. So I do think it would be a uh, quite emotional thing to see the direct aftermath of that moment through the eyes of the JSA, 
obviously specifically Dr. Midnight and how it affected them. Another important thing to highlight is that the JSA members didn't necessarily know about the other members' families as Pat did highlight when Jenny Lynn Hayden showed up in episode two or the end of episode one, but most of episode two. He didn't know Green Lantern had a daughter. That was just something that the JSA didn't talk about because keeping their families separated from the JSA stuff was the best for their safety. But you would have to think the meat and potatoes of this episode or the main portion and of the stuff with, you know, this episode and Jay Garrick and the flashbacks would be highlighting how the JSA dealt with Eclipso previously. With there also being a possibility that they do showcase other times in which Eclipso was an issue. However, I think they could do that in the lead up to this episode. As I previously said in the video, it seems the shade is going to sort of lead the newest uh, new JSA through little hints and all that, down the path of finding out who Eclipso is and what he can do and what he's done. So I could see the flashbacks maybe just dealing with the Eclipso issue from that direct moment in time, most likely after the death of Rebecca, uh, Rebecca McNider, but they could deal with it a bit later than that in, in like the timeline, if it suits the story better in their eyes. And also there is even the possibility throughout this flashback episode that we do see multiple encounters that the JSA had with the ISA from that past as they still would have been a thing. It's not like they just took a break. However, one big thing to remember is that Eclipso's diamond was in William Zarek or the Wizards collection. That's where Cindy got it at the end of last season and where the, the Shade retrieved the box last episode, specifically episode three if you're watching this later. So how did it end up there? Did the, did the ISA or the Injustice Society actually help the JSA tag down Eclipso in the past? Or was it actually the ISA that took him down through their various abilities? That would be quite an interesting thing to find out because, well, you would think if the JSA specifically took down Eclipso, his box and where he is would be in their headquarters in a very, very hard to crack safe or something like that. So I wonder whether that gets explored or maybe the ISA stole it from the JSA. I'm not too sure. I'm, I'm very curious to see how that's explained and what happens there. Now, in regards to this episode specifically, this could be minor spoilers. So if you want to leave now, feel free to, but I don't think this is massive because it was all over social media. So it's up to you. Now, obviously I'm not sure how true this specific one point is, but apparently the little kid, Bruce Gordon from the first episode is in this flashback episode um, with Jay Garrick and all the other JSA members. Now, I'm not 100% sure how true that is or isn't, but apparently that's something that could be happening in this episode. But in regards to stuff that we know that's going to be in this episode, we know that Starman, uh, the original Owlman, original Wildcat that we saw in episode three as well, uh, obviously Jay Garrick are in this episode at the very least. You would have to think or assume Dr. Midnight or Charles McKnighter is in this episode as well, considering his daughter was supposed or was killed. And uh, you have to think we'd see the direct aftermath of that. So due to their inclusion and, you know, potentially fleshing all that stuff out, it does, you know, bring it back to that point where it does make you wonder whether Eclipso was targeting the JSA's families back in the day. And that surely it wasn't a coincidence that Dr. Midnight's daughter was targeted by Eclipso like we saw at the beginning of season two. It's very mysterious, but also very curious. At this, or it's making me very curious at the same time. And I can't wait to see how it plays out because um, it could definitely, you know, break open the story and make Eclipso extremely personal. But the big question that we specifically have about, about Jay Garrick is, will this episode or does this episode highlight what happened to Jay Garrick? Because from all the teasers and hints for this appearance, they are saying that this is the version of Jay Garrick that we see on the Flash TV show. It's not an Ultimate Earth version. It is the one we have seen previously. Like obviously it's an Ultimate Earth, as in like Earth 2, but it's not a different version than the one we've been hanging out in the show. So I wonder whether they show us what happened that night when the when most of the JSA died? You know, where Jay, where Jay Garrick went. We saw his helmet. It was like iced over as if he'd been hit by icicle, but there was no body. We didn't see a Jay Garrick lying on the floor. Because we did hear Pat say that Jay Garrick did send uh, Per Degaton to an alternate timeline. I think that was in episode one or two. So maybe Jay Garrick traveled to an alternate Earth to get away from that moment. I mean, he's a speedster, so it's, it's extremely possible he just quickly went away. But then again, he also would have bailed on the JSA. So I wonder if that's something that he hangs on to. So I'm curious to see how they handle it and what's explained or if it's not explained, they maybe leave that, that up to a future crossover or a, or a future episode of something else. We'll have to wait and see, but um, at least if they plan to see it, I think I'd be pretty happy. But yeah, overall, I'm really looking forward to this episode. And there's been uh, a couple of different interviews, I think with the Trey Romano who plays Mike Dugan. And I think it might've been, I can't remember, I think it might've been uh, Angelica Washington who pay, plays Beth where they said that episode nine is their favorite episode of the season for multiple reasons. So if the actors are looking forward to it and they can specifically say, yeah, episode nine, episode nine, and we know that Jay Garrick's in there, we're getting flashbacks. 
I mean, how can you not be looking forward to this episode? I can't wait for it. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome. You could drop a like on it to show your support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions on all this. Are you looking forward to this episode? Do you have any theories or thoughts to add? Let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I will catch you guys later. Goodbye.